hosta. Many different kinds of hosta. Hosta is edible and actually medicine too. People just think it looks nice for, you know, around their house. The hosta looks nice. The deer love to eat it. <laughs> but this is food and medicine. And the hosta flowers are also food and medicine. I'll leave a description in this video. I did a write-up last week on what hosta can do for the body. And we have so much of this around. Most people do anyhow. It comes in different varieties. So these are the ones I have. These ones here. These three hosta. So what can we do with hosta? I'm going to show you a few things that we can do with hosta. So first of all, you could make a nice tea with the fresh leaves and the flowers to steep them in a covered pot for like 15 minutes. Covered to keep the essential oils in. Then you would strain that. You can drink it. Like I say, I'll leave a description of what the hosta does because it does so much. I can't eat, the video will be too long if I told you everything it did. <laughs> so you can make a strong tea and you would drink that tea. Or that strong tea that you made, you could use it for skin irritations too with the flower or the leaves. Great for skin issues, eczema and psoriasis. Takes the inflammation out of skin. This is one of the main things this does is take inflammation out of skin. So it's really great to make a salve, an oil, a spritzer for the skin, or to eat or drink it. Okay, so we've got that covered, the tea. Next, what you could do is dehydrate it. And dehydrate it so it's crispy. Hear that? It's crispy. So I put that in my dehydrator on 100 Fahrenheit talk louder because people are telling me that I talk too low on my videos so 100 Fahrenheit until they're crunchy and make sure they're crunchy because they're a little bit deceiving you'll think oh they're crunchy and you'll put them in a airtight container or something you'll go back and they'll be damp so just dehydrate them a little bit more I find with the hosta you've got to dehydrate it two sometimes three times just to make sure it's it's really dry Especially if you're going to make an oil, you want it to be dry. So, you want it to be dry, but you also want the color. This is a dried piece. This is a dehydrated piece. You still want it to have a lot of color in it. You don't want to dry it so it's brown. That would be too much, and then that'll take the medicinal value. See, this one still looks almost the same. <laughs> it's the same hosta. This one's dehydrated. And this one's still fresh. So if you can dehydrate it and it's dry and it still has color, you did a great job. And like I say, check on this. After you dehydrate, go back a day later and see if it feels damp and just do it until it's totally dry. But make sure you still have your color. Even though it's a thin leaf, it really takes quite a while to dehydrate. And like I say, it's tricky. So you would take... Let's make an oil. Here's some dry leaves. They're crunchy there. They're dry. They're crunchy. So let's make an oil that we, you would use for topical on the skin. Okay? To uh, relieve eczema or psoriasis. All you're going to do is break up your hosta. Hosta? Sorry. I always call it hosta. Hosta. Put it in your bottle. Clean mason jar. Make sure it's dry because if it's the least bit wet, your oil will go rampant. That means cloudy and it won't be any good. It'll go moldy. So I like to fill it about half full. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, so now I've got my hosta, dried hosta in there, making my oil. And then I'm going to, I like to use grapeseed oil, because grapeseed oil is 
great topical. Some people don't like taking grapeseed oil internal. That's fine. But topical, it's absolutely fantastic. It's loaded with vitamin C and vitamin E. So here's grapeseed oil. So it's really great for the skin. So these two combined together on the skin are fantastic. I might need some more oil. But just for video sake, because my oil's way in another room. Actually, I'll go get some more oil. I'll be right back. <laughs> If you could reframe from saying, could you just cut that out in um, that time that you left and just piece it together? I don't know how to do that. So it was only three seconds. So we're going to fill more grapeseed oil. And this is optional, but I like to put a cinnamon stick in with my pasta. Cinnamon is also great for the skin. So I put a cinnamon stick in there. I'm actually going to use it to kind of get the bubbles out too. Any bubbles, air bubbles that might be in there. And there seems to be none. <laughs> so then I'm going to cap it. And I'll label it what it is and when I made it. And then I'm just going to set this outside in the sun. Probably leave it right out here for two weeks. After two weeks, I'm going to have a beautiful, strong, topical oil for inflammation of the skin. Great massage oil, just rejuvenating the skin too, not just for inflammation. To give you a vibrant, young, fresh glow, the grapeseed does that, along with the hosta, great for skin. So that's how you make an oil. That's so easy. So that's done. We got the oil done. We got the tea done. Next, we're going to make an alcohol tincture. You could make a glycerin, but I'm doing alcohol tonight with 100 proof alcohol. So you don't need dry hosta to make an alcohol tincture. You can use wet because alcohol is water based. So I only have a few hosta right here right now. So I'm just going to take these. Break them up, open everything up so the alcohol can get in there and macerate things. I would put more in here and I will after, but my hosta is over there <laughs> a little bit. Oh, just wait, I'll go grab it. I'll be like three seconds and I can't chop and paste. I'll be right back. I can use some dry. You can use dry or wet. I'm just going to use some dry because then I don't have to go in and wash the leaves. <laughs> so I'm going to put some dry in here too. You can do all dry, wet, whatever you like for an alcohol tincture. You can do glycerin, but it should be dry. If you're going to do a glycerin tincture, make sure your, your herb is completely dry. Okay? So that's about half. Now I'm going to pull in, pour in <laughs> 100 proof alcohol. So this will become a tincture and you'll just need a teaspoon of this a day. And this can actually be used on the skin too, not just by mouth for a tincture, but you can use it on the skin too for skin irritations. So I'm going to just do this, get any little air bubbles out. And there was a few, they're coming out. That's good. Move things around there. There seems like I got all the air bubbles. So now for that, I'll cap it and label it. This will go into, let's actually put a few flowers in there too. Put some flowers in. Okay. 
there, put them in. I'm gonna cap it, label it, and put it in a dark cabinet, a cool dark cabinet for four to six weeks. And after four to six weeks, it's up to you. Six weeks it'll be stronger, four weeks it'll be ready. Um, then you're gonna take a teaspoon of this a day or when you feel like um, your immune system's low and you just want an extra boost, that's what you go to. So now we got the tincture. Now these, the flowers can be eaten too, and the leaves could be cooked, but the leaves are a little, I don't know, they're, they're tough when you cook them, I find. So I prefer the flowers. Just eating them like this, delicious. So you could deep fry, or sorry, you can saute these up too. Just take them off, well, take them off like that. Use them when they're closed. See how it's closed? Cook with them when they're closed, like that. You would just throw them into a frying pan with some salt and pepper and some garlic and some oil. Lightly saute them. They are fantastic, nutritional and delicious. Okay. So, next you could... Hold on here. <laughs> dry it and then put make sure it's real dry put it in your coffee buster or your buster whatever kind of grinder you have grind it up to a fine powder and then just put it in a little container like this get it as fine as you can this could be finer but just for the video sake I, I only did it so much I could have did it more if I want it to be finer, but this is going to work fine. <laughs> fine, finer. So there you go. There would be your little mix that you could shake on salads. You could put in smoothies. You could just add it to your potatoes, to any stir fry. Add it to anything. Add it to all the food that you eat every day. Or you could, like I say, bust it up really fine. And you can fill zero, zero, zero capsules which are the biggest, fattest capsule, you could fill them with the hosta, and that would be a supplement that you could just have in a bottle and take daily in the capsule form, or just cook with it, put it in smoothies. It actually has a, not much of a taste, a very light celery taste, very light, like there's not much taste to hosta. So there's some things that I said that I would tell you that I do with hosta. Oh. Make a tea with the, I don't know if I mentioned this, a tea with the leaves and the flowers, a real strong one, and cool it and put it in a spray bottle and use that to spray your skin down. And then the oil that you made after a couple of weeks of sitting in the sunlight, is that the oil? Yeah. Um, it's ready to be a massage oil. Or you could take the oil and add some beeswax and make a beautiful topical salve for inflammation of the skin and in the uh, video description I'll list everything that not everything but a lot of the things that the hosta does for the body and how you can prepare it I hope this video was helpful I hope you guys get out and start eating the wild medicines they've always been around hopefully they always will be and we need to know about this stuff because you never know in the near future we may have to eat these things that are around us, okay? So it's just good to know. Good, uh, good info. Have a great night, and I love you guys.